Welcome everyone to Interview Impossible. I am so thrilled to be interviewing Dave Fisk. He is the senior founding partner of SpyFu.com. Hey Dave, thanks so much for joining us. I'm excited to kind of do a walkthrough on your amazing tool. Absolutely, Heather. I really appreciate it too, and it's uh, great of you to have me on to uh, to take care of this. Um, you know, everybody, it, it really helps to have a walkthrough that you can refer back to because uh, SpyFu is, you know, it's it's a bunch of different tool sets right now. So finding out how to use them and how to navigate efficiently is uh, is one of the things that can never hurt to have reference material on. I think everyone needs to have an arsenal of tools to go to, not just one. I mean. There's a lot of keyword tools out there, and, and I think that really knowing one, which would be SpyFu in my mind, and really being able to drill into that and trust it and know how to navigate it quickly. And, you know, your tool has a lot to offer. So um, just based on some of the feedback from the Findability uh, University students is walk me through like two or three essential things I should be doing on SpyFu on a consistent basis. Absolutely. So. You know, the first thing um, that everybody, you know, if you don't know SpyFu or if you hear about us, the, the typical is, you know, enter a domain and see all the keywords that they rank on, both from a paid and organic standpoint. So we're going to take a look at one that we used in a, in a demo recently. Um, it's uh, hurricane plumbing. So we'll go into uh, that domain. So you can enter in anything right here in the search bar. So right when you're at SpyFu.com, um, right here from the search bar, just enter in a domain and uh, it'll drive you to what we refer to uh, uniquely as the domain page, right? The rocket plant on the title there. But um, what it's going to do for us is it's going to show us the paid and organic clicks that a domain has um, and, and what they're doing, what their history has been. Um, we'll let this load in for us here. Quick, uh, we can use other domains as an example, but any domain you go to, there's tabs here which will help guide you through the tools. We'll talk about those quickly. But you'll see the domain that you just searched for. The overview tab will show you all the information that we have for a domain. So you get the budget and how they've been trending. In this case, they're not spending really anything on, on PPC. So that's one of the pieces that you get to know, whether you're looking up your domain or a competitor's, what are they doing? Are they spending on SEO and how much have they been spending? This is a trend chart for that over the past three years. The next place that I like to go is actually switching straight down here, paid versus organic traffic. And I can click on that. It'll show me the chart and how they move. So how many clicks they get from either side. In this case, this is a relatively new domain. Obviously, if you're looking at a competitor that's established, you're going to see more data here. And that's actually easier uh, in a way because you'll, you'll automatically get the keywords and the traffic and everything. I'm going to show you this for a domain that doesn't have much to show you know, what you can do kind of as next steps. If this is your domain you're starting out or just analyzing a domain um, and trying to figure out where the next steps are. Okay. So what we've got is their budgets, that would be here in the trend, like I said, and then the paid versus organic click. So what is their strategy? The next thing that we're going to do is scroll down, and you might have to help me there a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So now we're scrolling down to the organic and paid keywords. You'll see two blocks. The paid will look exactly like the organic when they have more in that. Um, and the view more and the view all will drive you into these tabs, the SEO keywords, and the PPC keywords. Um, what this is showing you is the keywords that they have, what the rank is for the keyword. It'll say the same thing on the ad. The keyword that they're ranking for, the domain that it's pointed to, including the page or the path, so you can look at the content, the number of clicks, and the history. So you've got that. Um, you'll see the same thing on the paid keywords. And then if you'll scroll down for me a little bit, you'll get to break down the ad campaigns. Right now, they're not running an ad campaign, but you get profitable ads in here. And what that's going to show you, we'll take a look at a different domain as we look at competitors. And that's showing you competitors that they have. So it's another way to go to start finding out who's competing in the marketplace. Now, there are obviously is ad competitors for a plumber. This happens to be a plumbing shop in Denver. But since they're not advertising at all, you know, we mm -hmm. do this on a machine basis. We take the number of keywords they have on their ad side, the number of keywords they have on their organic side. We look at people who are advertising or ranking on those same keywords. So from an organic perspective, we see that Anthony's Plumbing and Drain is a competitor. Uh, it's done.com, affordable, afford a router plumbing. These are people that are advertising on, or excuse me, that are ranking on the same keywords that this domain is using right now. So they are competitors for them. So this is a good way to profile and take a look at your competition, uh, to take a look at you know a domain and see exactly what they're doing and how they're functioning. So once you have that, um, the key is now let's take a look at competitors. 
let's go find more people in the market space. Let's go find, you know, the specific uh, domains that I want to look at, that I want to emulate. Let me see who's leading the pack in different uh, areas. Okay. So okay. Now, that, now that I've got this, I, I can take a look by the keywords that I've seen, by the competitors that I have seen, and, you know, just because I looked at this domain, I know that they're a plumbing company, and they're in Denver. So let's go ahead and round this list out a little bit. Let's see everybody that's in this space. And another place that we can go is to the uh, leads area. So you're going to go to the products drop down right here. And we were in main. That's where you can type in any domain or keyword. We're going to go one below that to leads. And from leads, what I'm going to do is start looking at, and I'm going to leave this search box blank. You can put a domain in here, but everything is going to be built around that specific domain. I like to leave it blank and use the, um, uh, the features that are in the grid here. There's refine and filters that are here. This is a really easy tool to use. You just have to understand a little bit about how it works. And I can explain it very, very, uh, very easily. Um, can you scroll me down just a little bit just to get some more? That's perfect. So what we have is you can refine this by location. So I can enter in Denver, which is where this guy's market is. I can enter in technologies. It's not something you're going to use as much, but say if they use, you know, a blog or a specific a shopping cart analytics, we have a feature that does that. But location is what you'll use most. And industry is another thing that helps you out a ton. So there's a lot of tools that you'll go to get lists or look up companies. They'll have industries, uh, you know, stick codes and things like that. And you'll get computer and software as an industry. That's not really that drilled down. We look at keywords. So we let you search, you know, very specifically for things. I'm going to take a look at people who are advertising on Denver Plumber. And we'll also take a look at uh, Plumber Denver, just, you know, really easily mixing it both ways. So what I'm going to see now, these are... By the way, they're ands and they're or, well, they're ors, excuse me. I'm sorry about that. On the industry, they're ors. So it means that they can have Denver Plumber or Plumber Denver. They're not exclusive. They don't need to have both. So you can test these out. There's a good way to play with keywords that you think are valuable in your space, whether it's motivational speaker, whether it's um, uh, criminal defense lawyer, personal injury lawyer, whether it's a dentist or orthodontist or these things. So you kind of get the idea. And you long tail them a little bit for your location to try that, see what we get for results. You can tell by what's coming back in this grid how much of the information is working. If you can scroll down just a little bit to the bottom of this, because it'll tell us, you know, X out of Y. There you go. So there's 20 out of 136 results that we're looking at here. So I want to filter that down just a tad now. Um, because I'll notice, see, I'm getting some people like greatwesternplumbing.com. They may be a competitor. Maybe I see their vans on the street or whatever. But I can tell with their $0 budget and they're one organic click. That's what these two When you say are. budget, Dave, is that a pay-per-click budget? It is, absolutely. Okay. Thanks. It's, um, this is their monthly pay-per-click budget that's in this wow. column right here. And mm -hmm. this next piece is their SEO clicks that they generate per month. It's an estimate. So not keywords, but we're saying this is the amount of traffic they're picking up off of their organic. Got so it. when I look okay. at somebody like plumber-denver.co.com, with a zero dollar budget and a zero um, organic traffic. They're not the people I want to emulate, right? I don't <laughs> want to be them right now. Right. So I want to narrow this list down of 136 into the people that I kind of want to look at. And let's take a look at the people that are spending more than $500 a month on their paid campaign. So we go up to add budget and then hit more than 500? Absolutely. It's right okay. here under add budget and then more than 500. And you'll notice an X shows up. So you mm -hmm. can clear these at any time. There's okay. also under the more other options right here ways to filter. So I could say that I wanted to see, you know, everybody spending between a thousand and you know ten thousand dollars. Let's say that I don't want to, you know, I'm really not worried about people that are spending over that. But this automatically starts bringing in a good list of domains for me. Um, if I'm trying to copy somebody, I want to know that they're vested in what they're doing um, and that they've probably got some ad history, some, some that they've devoted time and resources, right? Uh, that's the mm -hmm. perfect person to emulate um, because they've, they've tested out these theories for you. They can tell you what is actually working. Now I'm looking at, when I see this, and I, I want to look at my SEO campaigns or things that I should create content for. I don't just want people, of course, that have ad budgets but no SEO. These guys at easyfixplumber.com are throwing money at their ad campaign, and they probably have some good keywords, but they're not generating content for me, and I want to see kind of both of those. 
But if I look at brothersplumbing.com and I look at plumbing service, or excuse me, plumblineservices.com, or even APC Plumbing right here. So these are some people that have SEO campaigns. In other words, they organically rank for some traffic as well as doing some paid traffic. So if I'm going to emulate somebody, if I'm going to look at somebody to really dig into their keywords and see what's helping them drive traffic, Plumline Services, for instance, is probably a good example for me to take a look at. Okay. Um, there's also, go ahead. No, yeah, they're a big player here in Denver. They got tons of radio ads and, you know, flyers and commercials and so they've obviously no, got some chops in the space. Awesome. And see, yeah. that's great to hear because, I mean, I really don't know anything being in, in Arizona, right, about the <laughs> right. Market, but right. it does help. When I do searches for, you know, local for, for local companies here as well, um, when I'm doing demos and things like that, it's a, it's a big thing because it will certainly find these. So I'm going to click on uh, plumblineservices.com, and what you're going to see, we're going to go, this is the domain pages again, but you'll notice we're on the leads tab. So we've just moved since I came from the leads platform. This shows us, you know, what we know uh, from SpyFu about the company. So addressing people, phone numbers, social media accounts. But where I'm going to go is back over to the overview tab. So I want to make sure when I get to the domain page that this is where I start. And this will give me an indicator of their budget over time. So I understand what they're spending. And then it also shows me their paid versus organic. Remember we talked about that just a minute ago. Why is that important? I want to know, you know, how much, what kind of success are they having with their organic campaign? What's their strategy? I'm going to click and you'll see that right here the blue is the organic clicks per month and the orange is the paid clicks per month. But I can see that they've been doing paid for a while. They're trying to build their organic up and they've actually done a decent job of building the traffic that they're picking up from their organic um, keywords. So they've been building that up over a period of time. And they've actually dropped their ad spend a little bit um, based on it. Now they've picked it uh, back up recently and they're actually doing better traffic probably on both. Um, if you can scroll down just a little bit here. All right, so right there, we're going to take a look at the organic keywords. We see that there's 239 keywords they're using and we see kind of what these keywords are, Denver Plumbers, Plumbers Denver, things that we were just looking at, Plumline, which is their brand, so you can see these things in here. You can see the ranking that they have for them, the approximate SEO clicks they pick up per month, and we can take a look at how they've ranked for them over time. Not something we're going to do today, but you can see for your site or other sites how, uh, how the rankings have evolved over time for this organic content, and you can also see overlays of things like, you know, Penguin and Panda and the Google changes, how they've laid it over those, and if they've caused any of those effects. Um, you can see their paid keywords in here and the cost and the clicks they pick up off them. But we want to focus on. They're not getting a lot of ranking though under organic. It looks like they're not doing a whole well, lot. Yeah, they're really not. They're ranked number one on their brand, which you'd kind of expect. So Plum Line, uh, as they've come, and not even on Plum Dash, you know, Plum Space right. Line right there. Mm -hmm. Plumber Denver, they're not too high on organically. This is probably why they're, they're forty-two, so fancy correct? So like fourth page, second position down. Is that forty-two? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's forty-two, and you can see that that's causing them also to pay for the keyword. Right. So this is a twenty-six dollar uh, a click keyword. And we estimate that their daily cost on this is about $250. Hmm. So because their ranks are low right now, they're having right. to do both. And I'm sure they're trying to bring those up. Now, what I want to point out here is that you can see also the pages that they're, they're linking to. So a lot of these are going to their home page, which makes sense on their brand and the general plumbing information. But they've also got to so do it yourself plumbing in Denver. They've got drain cleaning, things like that that they're actually creating content for. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this a little bit deeper. We're going to go to the View All Organic Keywords, which is going to take us to this tab, this FM oh, Keywords okay. tab. So when we click on it, you'll see that we drill in here. And now we've got kind of the whole grid of their keywords. And if you can leave just the filter a little bit on top right there, just so I can see the filter area right here. Perfect. Um, what I want to show you is that um, so we can see those key, those domains, excuse me, those keywords again, and the pages that they're pointing at, just like we were looking at a minute ago. We can see the rank. We throw cost per click data in here so you understand how valuable the keyword is, how many people are fighting over it, that kind of thing, and also the information you need to understand searches. So this is monthly searches that they're getting. The ranking difficulty is a 0 to 100 scale, and what it really means is how many people are on it, how many of those are, say, home pages, you know, are there... Uh, gov and edu pages, those kind of things. So they all weigh into our ranking difficulty. The lower the number, the easier it is to rank on that keyword organically. 
Um, so what you see here is the data that we need for the keyword. And I want to point out this filter right here. So this is nice, and Plumber Denver is a good keyword. Plum line, really not something that I'm going to create if I'm hurricane plumbing. I'm probably not going to create a bunch of content on their brand. Right. But let's say I do water heaters, and I'm looking for you know, something specifically. I could do water heaters. Water heater is probably what I'll use. Let's see if that broadens it. There we go. So these are exact matches, but, they'll, but they're, they're part of a phrase match. So if I do water heater, I'm getting any keywords they have with water heater in them. And now you can start seeing mm -hmm. water heater repair Denver they've got uh, and, and a ton of this. And you can see the pages that they're driving that content to. So I can take everything that they have for water heater. And I can also then take a look at, let's take a look at the ones that get the most monthly searches. What I'm doing is clicking right next to the word monthly search. You'll see this drop down. We do have a variance for you as far as um, what, the, what the number we're using for this, whether it's local or global, and that comes from Google's Keyword Planner. Global okay. means that it's on Google's entire network of sites. Local means that it's on Google.com in that area. So we're okay. going to go ahead and click on that. And when I click on the column name, which I'm doing, you'll see it'll sort. So 110 clicks per month, 110 searches per month for this one, and then on down as we get it. Now some of these zeros are going to be because that's what we got from Google's keyword tool this last mm -hmm. month, the planner. Mm -hmm. But they can change on a month-to-month -month basis. So they're not necessarily bad. I don't want to point that out. I, it's just that we got zeros with this, this month on them. Okay. So you see the keywords that are driving traffic, and you see now the content that they're using. So you can see they have a tankless one. Uh, they have advantages of tankless water heaters. They have plumbing services, hot water heater repair. And that's what some of these are, too. What I'm pointing this out is when you start looking at your site and you want to rank on these keywords, you have the ability to take a look. You don't want to obviously copy this content, you know, word for word or anything like that, right? It's not plagiarism time, but it is inspiration time. Take a look at what they're using and how they're achieving these rankings. And you can do better. One of the things that I'd know looking at this is, you know, 16th is where they are. That's one of their higher mm -hmm. rankings, uh, right. 38. So there's the opportunity. Now, one of the things I'll point out, so you can, let's hit this before we go anywhere else. You can okay. export these. So you filtered this. You can clear the filter by dropping this. And you may want to take a look at, you know, drain cleaning. You might want to take a look at any number of things that go, you know, drain repair, some those kind of things. Um, so you can do searches for it through their keyword base this way, but this is a great way to group them quickly by content that you're looking at. And then you can okay. export these keywords right here. So by clicking on this button, this will download a CSV file that you can open up, which will have everything you want. Uh, so you can open that up with a spreadsheet viewer, and it'll have all this data in there as far as the cost per click and the search volume, search volumes particularly that you're looking for. Now, Dave, so, is it possible to download all the keywords they rank for and not just water heater? Absolutely. So if you take this filter that we were just talking about, you can go ahead and clear that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is then hit filter again. So that will remove that. Now I can see okay. all their keywords. And then once again, I can export everything that they have. And I can look through it at my leisure. You know, um, if uh, you, know, you need something to settle you down before you go to bed or something to pump you up right when you go to work in the morning. <laughs> right. List, you know, great time to open this up. But so the other quick thing question for you. Do, sure. When you're looking at a list like this strategically, where is the low hanging fruit? When you're looking at a big list of, of keywords like this, it could be kind of overwhelming. I mean, you've looked at this tool probably every day for years, right? And sure. we're first timers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, yeah. when you're looking at this, where do you sort of go to that's the most, yeah, we look at number ones, right, which are mostly their name. But what right. makes something more attainable versus another? I mean, how do I start looking at this and saying, I should use those rather than these? Well. So a couple of the places that I say, you know, you've got the monthly searches, so it's one of the places that I want to go to take a look at what's driving traffic. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these things are going to be their, you know, specific brand. Some of them are going to be specific areas that drive a lot of search. So where they are and when, how they're ranking, it, it's what, what I like to look at, really, to tell you the truth, is areas that I want to build content for. So I'll look at what they're what they're driving, what they're dri what's driving traffic, and what's popular. Having an article about garbage disposals, what I know automatically looking at this is that you know, if you're telling people uh, information about plumbing problems, if you have a, um, you're selling your services, obviously, right? But if you're if mm -hmm. you're getting things that are going to get searched on Google quite frequently by people when they have a 
whether it's remodeling my bathroom or, you know, it's a uh, toilet leaking all over the floor. Or so, you know what I mean? This mm -hmm. garbage disposal leaking from bottom. Those are keywords that I'd take a look at. Yeah. The, the specific on how I go find it is I'm really going to look at the search volume. I'm going to see what's coming up. I'm going to look at the pages that they have because I want to focus my content um, and I want to think of things that are important to me. So my plumbing business, if I'm Hurricane, for instance, uh, you know, there's the hot water repair, hot water heater repair. Um, I'll, I'll use the filter, honestly, to find specific things like that. Um, the things with search volume and low ranking difficulty also get better. So there's another quick way to mm -hmm. search in here. So as you were mentioning, if I'm just looking for keywords about like an area that's going to generate traffic for me, this mm -hmm. monthly search volume and sorting by that is going to help me. And the ranking difficulty helps me understand a little bit how difficult it is. So, so I can lower the that. number. Can also, mm -hmm. Lower the number. Lower the number is so better. Lower the number. Yep. Okay. Lower the number is better. That's kind of counterintuitive. Um, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. The ranking. Yeah. Well, it's because it's difficulty. We thought if we did ranking difficulty, a hundred should be the most difficult. Sure. Um, whereas we could have done ranking ease, and maybe a hundred would have been the, the easiest. But we we put that together. So those are ways to find areas that you can generate traffic that sh certainly shouldn't be too competitive. And those are things you want to look at. Um, but then you want to start looking at pieces around that to figure out how you want to build it out. Right. Because what you want to do is have obviously that keyword universe that you're going to use for your content as you're putting it together um, that ideally is getting you the, the, uh, the authority uh, and, the, and the rankings on that. So I do it two ways. I'll browse this. And like I said, look at the monthly searches and glance at the ranking histories to tell me. So there's things like um, water heater repair Denver, which has got 110 searches, is what Google is telling me. And it's you know a 30 in difficulty. It's not that hard to get ranked on. Um, even drain cleaning, Denver drain cleaning. So some of these local keywords, um, do it yourself, plumbing in Denver. Not a very high ranking difficulty. Decent monthly searches. You could have a good article in there. You know even even you could link to plumbing supply stores if you wanted to do some affiliate, you know, some some help back and forth that would probably get you some goodwill in your community. But you can also be talking about, you know, the, the pitfalls of maybe doing, you know, plumbing repairs yourself and things that you mm -hmm. should watch out for and why it's good to hire a professional. So in looking at all these, I can start drilling into the keywords around them. And so I can do do it yourself plumbing or do it yourself or things like that and see what kind of keywords they have around it so that I know how to build out. I can also look at these pages, and it's one of the things that I want to do. If you can um, uh, command click on that, so we open it up in a new tab, this URL that's right here. There we go. I'm going to go up here. One of the things that we can do, and this one's not uh, uh, specific. I wanted to do it on the do-it-yourself plumbing. We were looking at it. Uh, best practices. This is the content that they have. So this is the hmm. URL to the page of content that they've put together on this. They currently have two keywords ranked on it. Hmm. Okay. And if uh -huh. you scroll down, so you can see the two keywords that are there. If you scroll down, you can see these are the actual rankings they have. Do-it-yourself plumbing Denver 16th and DIY plumbing Denver ranked 12th. Okay. Not a ton of clicks, but this is the content. You can actually go to their specific page right here with this off. Uh, this uh, icon mm -hmm. in the box with the arrow in it. So you can see exactly what they're doing for content. And then some of the things that you know you talk about in your seminars too, you can use the Keyword Planner tool to get involved in there a little bit and start finding other recommendations for keywords that you can use around it in this content. But you can see from this exactly what people are doing, uh, how they're ranking, what rankings they have on what the page is, and actually get out to the page. So I wanted to right. show that because everything in here on these keywords they're using, whether it's talking about router, whether it's talking about heating, whether it's talking about tankless water heaters or water heater repair, they have these um, specific pages on that. So I can do a search using that filter that we pointed out, and then I can get the keywords that have you know water heater in it, or I can drill into the specific page by clicking the link down on that we see, and that'll take me to the page, and it'll show me all the keywords that they have that point back to this page that they're using and how much traffic that page is getting. Yeah, I like this a lot because you really are reverse engineering as opposed to trying to start from a blank slate. You really can go ahead and say, okay, what's the landscape? You know, where should I maybe be focusing my energy? Or maybe you discover that the competitor really isn't doing what you where you want to go, and you've been fixating right. over, over that competitor for a long time, and now all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't know why I've been so obsessed with them when they're going in right. a completely different direction. 
Yep. That's exactly it. And you want to take a look, obviously, at a couple of competitors. So, you know, speaking about that, the part that we covered earlier back on the leads, you know, we could see once we filtered it down to domains that were spending between $1,000 and $10,000 and that had organic clicks. There was, you know, we got down into, there was five or ten domains that had some pretty solid traction from their organic, you know, campaigns, what they've worked on in the past. Being able to go in and take a look at a few of those the same way, you know, I, I want to build out my section on water heater. If I'm hurricane plumbing, you know, water heater repair, water heater installation, those kind of things, I can use these three sites. I can use the filters on their organic keywords to see exactly what keywords they have and how much traffic they're generating, you know, that we think that they're picking up. So how good are the keywords that we're talking about? And then I can see the content that they're using, that they're publishing about those things. And I can then drill into that page and see all the keywords for sure that they're ranking for on this page. It gives me a good idea of what I can expect when I go to build this content out. I can look at two or three examples from competitors around town, and then I can decide, you know, hey, this is what I want my messaging to be. But now I have a good keyword universe for this page of content, and I can get it created. So whether I want to source that, whether I want to build it myself, you've got options there. But this is a good way to understand exactly what um, your competitors are using in the marketplace to drive their traffic and put it inside, well, we like to call them silos. I'm trying to remember what was. We call them silos, the, bucket, buckets. There you go, buckets, right. So yeah. when you put those together, you've got now the keyword buckets that you want to use for your specific topic. Uh, like I said, in this case, it being the, uh, the plumber, you know, we've got uh, water heaters and we've got um, drain cleaning and things like that. And then you can look at, based on these pages and based on doing these filters, Look at two or three competitors, see what they've got for keywords around that. And then you're starting to build out this bucket real well. But you can also tag, save these links right here, and then you've got the content that two or three of your competitors have put together around that as well. And that really gives you, you know, kind of a head start when you go to put pen to paper. And then using your methods, um, which are great for findability for me about how you want to construct, you know, that page, that data, and the things that you want to have on there to help your rankings. Um, uh, you know, everything from how mm -hmm. you treat the, the images on the page, the videos, and everything else, right. you're going to more than likely do better than, if you look at most of these pages, they, they just, they understand enough to create a page and get ranked a little bit, but they don't have the, they don't have the findability formula down. So. They want to give them a call, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's that. I'm Like I said, if you're trying to beat them, you've got a leg up. So. <laughs> right. It's just more than just naming the page by the keyword. I think it's probably Absolutely. more than that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what other what so, kind of nuggets are there in here that we should kind of know about? There's so much this does, and I just I want to keep this concise for the, and then maybe sure. we'll do an advanced uh, spy foo on our next call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I think that um, you know with what we're covering, it, it's probably the best at you know for for this point is to just understand that you can profile a market using the leads platform that these leads, that we were just right. showing off a minute ago, um, which will help you understand the players in there. And then being able to use uh, the domain page to go in and take a look is very, very good and get to the keywords. There's another tool that we can use in here um, that is uh, a good piece to check out. It's a good way to do a comparison, um, and it's called our combat. So I went to product, and okay. like I said, we were, we were at main when we entered the domain. We were at leads when we took a look at how to profile some of the different the space to find out domains. And then in combat right here, Combat gives us a way to take three domains and pit them against each other and see kind of how their keyword overlap is working. Now, we're going to do this as a two-step process um, because I want to, we're actually going to take Plumline Services and I'm going to, this is funny because I don't know, can you scroll up to the top? Yeah. I don't know how to overcome that with my mouse right now. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to, and what I'm doing right now is navigating back from that page that we were on to their main domain. So this okay. is the domain page for them. And let's take a look at, if you scroll down now, let's go to competitors. It's in this overview tab, but now a little bit lower. And we'll keep going past. This is their keywords. This is their AdWords campaign. Here's their competitors right here. So we're going to take a look. Bell Plumbing is one that we see. Hurricane, which we, you know, was the domain that we started with, shows up in this. So we've got Blue Sky and Bell Plumbing. If I click on this overlap space, it will automatically take me into combat. 
And what I'm going to do is do bell plumbing in my third domain. That was the other one that we saw right there. Yeah. So I'm going to add them in and hit search also. So this is there. You'll notice there's multiple tabs in here, but this is their ad overlap. And then if I click right next to it, this is their organic overlap. The size of the bubble is based on the number of keywords that they use. So bell plumbing in this case has got more organic keywords than the other two. Um, and the overlap is obviously the size of the universe that they have where they share keywords. If I'm new to this space, I can do this with three of my competitors and I can take a look specifically. This 106, and the reason I'm saying this, right, bell plumbing, if I'm new to this space, hurricane plumbing for instance, and I don't have a lot of SEO yet, um, I can type any one of these in and I can obviously get all their keywords. We were just talking about that. But what this shows me is a good way to profile these businesses. Bell Plumbing may do some services that I don't do. They may do some services that Blue Sky doesn't. But if I look at Bell Plumbing, Blue Sky, and Plumbline, and I look at this area of the graph where they all, in this Venn diagram, where they all overlap, there's 106 keywords here. Mm. I'm going to click on that. And so what I've got is the first five of this, but I can export all 106 keywords. And this is 106 keywords that three of these competitors all use. So if I have to narrow a list down, if I'm looking at, you know, in this case, there's 795 plus all these other segments, 104. So these guys have over 1,000 keywords. Mm -hmm. These guys probably have four or 500 keywords. These guys maybe have 250 combined. And if I'm looking at that as, you know, trying to sort through these lists, I can get overwhelmed pretty easily. How do I find the keywords that I know are the valuable keywords, right? And it's where, where these guys overlap, where all three of them are trying to get rankings. And it shouldn't intimidate you. These, you know, it should tell you, okay, I'm going to have to probably, you know, do some content and, and, you know, get stuff done. But these are the things that all, everybody in my space is using. And to be a player in here, these are things that I need to take a look at. So I can do that and I can export all 106. So whether you're comparing your own domain, which you can do, against competitors. So if I was Plumline Services, this 143 segment, the Bell Plumbing and Blue Sky Plumbing use that I don't, good place that I want to start looking through. I can export that and I can sort it by the search volume that's being used and it'll help me figure out you know, which keywords are driving the most traffic out of those 143. So what am, where am I missing the most opportunity? And that is going to be the things with the highest search volume in there. I see. So this is called combat. It gives us a good way to take a look at that. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, too, you have the um, hmm. these grids. These are overlap. This is the number <laughs> of ad keywords and how they've changed over time. This is the number of organic keywords and how they've changed over time. You can see Bell Plumbing is making a pretty big push into the organic space right now, mm -hmm. where Plumline Services has actually lost some of their organic keyword rankings. If hmm. I go back and look at this over time with our grids, I can probably see that this you know, I believe with that uh, November update that that was uh, a Google uh, algorithm change. Mm. That wasn't necessarily right. they launched a new site. What's that? That isn't necessarily they launched a new site or? No, it's not necessarily they launched a new site or did anything specific on that. Like I said, mm. with it being in the, let me mouse over that again, see if I can pick it up. Uh, July 13, I'm thinking that that's, uh, that's a Google algorithm change that could have done that. So depending on mm -hmm. how you mm -hmm. see here, they were kind of trucking along and gaining some traction. They right. had a very sharp increase, so it's possible that they, you know, did some things to, you know, gain some traffic, whether it was backlinks or other things, whether mm -hmm. they think farmed out some stuff, who knows. But it went along, but they've had two pretty big dips in it since then. So right. I guess that, that could be, to me, that... Dropping that many keywords, this isn't traffic, this is keywords, and dropping that many keywords means that Google just dropped a lot of things from the index that they were, that these guys were doing. Hmm. Really so, interesting. See, yeah. I was just going to say there's budget in there, too, so you can see how they've been doing ads over time. But So I think this is helpful to find, you know, specific areas instead of having to do um, – looking at somebody's entire keyword listing going through it, you can isolate, you know, using two or three domains, isolate the keywords that are probably going to be the, the most specific to your industry, to your space. Now, what does domain budget mean exactly? Is that is that pay-per-click? It is, yeah. This is their okay. pay-per-click budget over time. Got it, okay. So, yeah, they were spending a lot. At one point, they were almost spending, this is a month, well, you know, almost July 13th again, they were spending yep. $51,000. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that could have been a push, and like I said, we'll look at those things. Huh. And, you know, they, it could have been that somebody new picked up their ad campaign and happened to have a lot of things that were, you know, when you, if you're a plumber and you're in Denver and you want to do a paid ad campaign and you want to advertise on plumber, that's a really good thing as long as you geo-target it correctly so that your mm -hmm. ads are only being displayed in Denver. If you right. accidentally turn it on and you don't geo-target it, right, then you get kind of national exposure on that, and that can cost you a lot of money. We see mm -hmm. budget spikes sometimes when we see them accidentally uh, turn on um, a campaign that doesn't get the geo-targeted the way it should or other things like that, so they get a little bit mm -hmm. more exposure than they wanted to. That could have been it. They could have actually raised their budget in keywords. And we can, we can go back into that domain and we could look at their uh, paid keywords over time uh, to see, you know, what they've mm -hmm. done. Right. As a matter of fact, even in this, we should see a spike right in here. And I don't see a big spike that corresponds to that budget hmm. spike. So I would say that they changed maybe their campaign right in here. Um, and some of it caused an increase in budget with some of the keywords or some of the scope that they did. Interesting. So I think I guess I would be more you know interested in doing what kind of break down what blue sky plumbing is, look at their keywords, and then seeing what on page elements they're doing potentially, um, yep. because they seem to be really aggressively going after that. Absolutely, and that's one of the things. So knowing that after we've taken a look at this a little bit, right, we can go in here, and we can go into this and do so we can do blue sky plumbing um, and some of the things that we can take a look at so we obviously can see they have 497 keywords that they're using and we can go in and take a look in that grid at all their keywords but another thing I'll show you this um, because we want to evaluate, we know they're growing pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. I want to see some of their newer pages, right? Seeing how, yeah. you know, you were mentioning, you know, what are they actually doing with their new pages and how are they putting it together? A good place that we've got for that too is this SEO reports tab. So I'm going to click on this. So remember, the SEO keywords takes me to that full list that I can filter and export and do everything with. But this SEO reports tab, this will take a second to load in, but what we do is we're comparing this month to last month. Hmm. And so one of the things you'll see, keyword gains, they have 172 keywords that gain position this month to last month. Hmm. They have 100 new keywords this month to last month. And if you scroll down a little bit, those are losers that you're going to see at the bottom. We can, we'll, I'll sh just scroll down, we'll show you where they are, and then we'll come back up here. But um, So these are the things, <clears throat> if you want to look at the domain too, things that fell out of the top 10 spots or things that lost rankings. But now go ahead and scroll back to the ones that are gaining again, just up a little bit. We can take a look at these keywords that they have that are gaining um, and you know see what they're doing on page. So they have their services. So they have a directory right now that they're doing. It's blueskyplumbing.com slash services. Do you see this right here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So that's right in this. And you can see where they're making gains is a lot in this service area. It's a service silo, it looks like, uh -huh. or a service and VP. Absolutely, right? So yeah. you can yeah. see boiler, fireplace, all this. What they've done is lumped it under their services, and so they're breaking that out. And so they've made it roll up, so they're not all you know, uh, separate pages that are going in here. It is a big content bucket that they're mm -hmm. you know, then drilling out from. You can see that their services, this is a service area, and there's, so you've got Avarada and Lakewood and those things that they're doing. And then they have services, slash, and then they're going into these different things. This is emergency plumbing, for instance. Um, services, drain cleaning, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how they've broken it out. And we can go take a look at the actual page, too. So Let's do that. So they have a directory of services, slash, drain cleaning. Yeah. And we could actually back up. We could kill this just to see, you know, how they're structuring this. More than likely, let's see if it's true or not, you can scroll down and they probably have plumbing services and then they probably have links. There we go. So this is also helping them, you know, link build throughout their site. So not only do they have this in a lot of their keywords that are underneath this service page, um, but then they have 
also, as you click on those, you're drilling into separate pages that they have specifically talking about those services mm -hmm. that they do. And you can see there's the gas fireplace repair, um, yep. plumbing repair and installation, drain cleaning, and all that. Well, this is a great example of not so pretty of a website doing pretty good ranking. I think a lot of people Absolutely. think you have to sacrifice one for the other, and it's not a spectacular website. To me. No. You know, but they're doing no, it's not. You know, basic you SEO practice it. really well, right? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's one of those pieces. I mean, you you want to have the content. It doesn't have to be super pretty, but you want to have the content. You can see that they're your plumbers in Denver, right? They're on the title, right? I mean, it's yep. um, so they know their keywords. They're using them, and they found a way. Because here's the other thing, right? People ask this a lot. I don't know. You probably get this a ton, right? Because I get this. They they find a keyword, um, you know, a keyword silo or a keyword bucket that they want to use. And they're trying to figure out, how do I get this all on a page, right? They're like, right. how do I get all these words on a page? And sometimes trying to put all those words on a page just gets you this content that seems to be repetitive, let's say, right? You're mm -hmm. using uh, the same kind of words over and over again. Or in this case, plumbing services, all the things that they do, you know, they've used a directory to create that. So they have a higher level page now where they have all these keywords, heating, air conditioning, boiler repair, all these things on this and they're all there for a reason. They're another link, another page that you can click to, which gets yeah. them, you know. Well, look how look at how deep they're now building their silos. See, plumbing yep. is now real deep. Yep. Yep, and heating and air conditioning. So you can tell, by the way, that they're going through and actually working on this. They haven't done everything yet. So plumbing is big, but you know, they could build out more than they have on some of these other areas. Absolutely. What you are seeing based on you know what we saw in combat and how they're growing pretty substantially and they're organic and what we saw on the page the domain page for blue sky plumbing plumbing when we went to the SEO report tab is how many new keywords and how many keywords that are going up in rankings for them is that this is actually working it's, a, it's definitely something in progress for them right now but they're they're right. making headway yeah look well, at you, that. Can, Just everything you can see they they're going to build pro build all this out it looks like yep yep and they started and with this one yeah, that's going to mm -hmm. help them get that. Once they get that, like I said, there's all those things they wanted in that silo, but they've got a reason to have them on the page now, and they're going to build out a content page underneath all those things too. Mm -hmm. so. It still amazes me after all the sophistication and all the work we've done around web design that it's, it's sort of the scrappy websites that do the best in a lot of cases. Not Absolutely. the beautiful ones, but the ones that are like, yep. you know, let's do this. And they just go in and they start building good quality content, but – Highly organized, thoughtful content. Yep, yep. It's having an idea how that site map's going to work, right? And having those mm -hmm. uh, those buckets planned out and being able to put that together. It's a it's a it's a huge thing, and this is proof positive right here that it works. There's nothing magical about what they're doing. It's um, they're putting that all those keywords to good use. They've got mm -hmm. them all arranged correctly in silos, and they're building out content pages for it. Well, this has been great. I'm so glad you walked me through it because every time I feel like I'm in here, I learn something new about this. This this is so much more than the keyword planner ever wished it could be. This is like the badass baby that the keyword planner never had. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Google and Scott Faifu had a baby. No. That's right. And this is what it is. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much. I, we look forward to, you know, up, uh, you said you're working on some new things for um, SpyFu, and we'll keep an eye out for that. And I know my members are using, um, we have a, um, a download for you, anyone who's listening to SpyFu. Um, you guys have given us a really generous offer. And um, make sure to join the university so that you can get the logins and passwords for a 368 trial of SpyFu. Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I appreciate it. Always great to connect with you. Pleasure, Heather.